Recently, while trying to animate some really basic text titles in Final Cut on my M1 Pro MacBook, the entire system seized up and crashed. And this happened over and over again. While in the meantime, on my old 2018 i7 MacBook Pro, it rendered it with no problem. So today I want to compare these two MacBook Pros, the i7 2018 model and the M1 Pro 2021 model when it comes to performance in Final Cut. So I'm going to break the comparison down into general workflow, rendering speeds, export time, and then we'll talk about that really annoying text issue and whether or not it was actually worth upgrading considering it was worth over three and a half grand. So I've had my i7 2018 MacBook Pro for about four years now and it's done everything that I've ever asked it for in terms of video editing. However, I do a lot more video editing these days than I used to and so I hope that upgrading to the M1 Pro would just make my overall workflow that much faster. So obviously both laptops open, run and you can import footage into Final Cut just fine, there's no problems there. But then once we start actually working in the timeline, that's where I first started to notice a difference. So generally with my workflow, I'll have my raw footage imported into the timeline and then I add four adjustment layers, including two LUTs on those adjustment layers. And on my i7 MacBook Pro, generally I'll have those four color correction layers turned off and also I'll have the preview bumped down to better performance and this is just because I find if I have the preview turned on to high quality and all the correction layers turned on my preview it just feels slower it's just a little bit more stuttery if you transition between different clips it might start to drop frames and lag a little bit and when I'm trying to pump out a video as fast as possible it's just just kind of annoying so I usually leave all those layers turned off Whereas one of the first things I noticed on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro was that I can leave all the adjustment layers on, I can leave the preview in high quality and there's no drop frames. It feels really smooth and quick and snappy. I can jump around the timeline with no problems, which means I can really get a sense of how my video is gonna look at the end while I'm editing it without having to worry about the adjustment layers affecting the overall speed of the edit. So now in terms of the rendering speed, one of my biggest gripes with the i7 was having to wait for things like transitions or stabilization and text effects all to render in the timeline before I could play them back properly in the preview. And this is just because I had to sit there, wait for 10, 20 seconds, and I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't keep going with my edit. And those little bits of time, 20 seconds here, 20 seconds there, always add up to a fairly significant amount of time by the end of the actual edit. So I'd hoped on the M1 Pro that would take a lot of this time out. And so far I found that it has lived up to my expectation. So I did a test on each machine comparing how long it would take to pre-render a timeline of an eight minute YouTube video. The M1 took just under five minutes, so about four minutes 50. As you can see, the Intel machine took about nine minutes to render the timeline which means the M1 Pro is a little under two times as fast as the older i7. Now, practically I've found this just means when I'm again waiting for transitions to render or a text effect or even stabilization on a clip, I really do notice the difference. It does feel a lot quicker and, I'm, and like I'm not waiting around for as long for just a simple effect to render. So I'm very happy about that because that's kind of the main reason why I wanted to buy the machine in the first place. Although this is also where I ran into that really annoying text issue, but more on that later. Now finally, in terms of export times, the M1 Pro lived up to my expectations, but didn't necessarily surpass my expectations. Again, I did a head-to-head -head comparison with the same timeline, and it took the M1 Pro about four minutes 40, and it took the Intel i7 about eight minutes to fully export the YouTube video. Now, obviously saving twice as much time is a really good thing, but at the end of the day, export times don't really affect me that much because generally, once I've hit export on a video, I'll just go and make a coffee or go and get a drink or something like that. And it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of how much time the overall project is gonna take. But the big benefit I did find on the M1 Pro is that I can actually keep using my computer while the export is happening in the background. On my i7 MacBook Pro, it was pretty much bricked. Like I couldn't really browse the web or anything because my entire MacBook would just lag while the export was happening. So that text issue. Basically what I found was that if I had stacked more than maybe three or four layers of text and then had the same animation on each of them, my entire MacBook Pro would freeze up and it would force a restart. And I think I realized this is probably a memory issue. I did some basic research online and I found some other people having a similar issue where the M1 chip isn't allocating memory correctly and therefore it overloads the memory and the whole system crashes. So I think the fact that it's trying to render multiple 
multiple layers of animation at once is just too much in terms of memory consumption. Now, I feel like it shouldn't really happen considering I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM in my i7 and I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM in my M1 Pro and the i7 can render it while the M1 Pro can't. So I'm hoping they'll be able to fix this issue in some future updates, but it does kind of make me wonder whether I should have actually upgraded to more memory. Maybe I should have gotten 32 gigabytes of memory instead of 16 gigabytes of memory. So for me, was it worth the upgrade? I think the answer still is definitely yes because of that time saving in terms of actually editing the timeline. Now, if I wasn't doing regular 4K video editing, then I really don't think it will be worth upgrading to the M1 Pro. My wife has got the M1 Air and it's really great for day-to-day -day things. It's honestly comparable to my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. If I wasn't doing video editing, I wouldn't go for the MacBook Pro. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a comparison between the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. But other than that, make sure you check out my Creative Tech playlist and I'll see you very soon in the next video.